When I chose this text uh, for our Monday Thursday service about Jesus wanting and eagerly desiring to eat his Passover with his friends, and I started thinking about friends, that's the first thing that came to my mind was something from my childhood. Uh, the show Super Friends ran from 1973 to 1986. They did 109 episodes produced by Hanna-Barbera using the DC comic characters, the Justice League of America. But Hanna-Barbera changed the name and went with the Super Friends. And I find that fascinating because the characters, Superman, Batman and Robin, Wonder Woman and Aquaman, they're not really friends in the comics. They don't hang out together. They don't usually work together. But in this particular case, they were coming together, working for a common purpose for the greater good. Uh, and it was a great example and a, and a useful thing. Uh, and so, starting with the idea of friends, let's take a look at our text tonight. It's short, just three verses from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. I'll read the whole thing and then just make a few comments. It says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Just about every word of that second verse is important for us. That first phrase, when the hour came, lets us know what we're talking about here. This is Thursday evening of what will later become, of course, Holy Week. It's Thursday evening. Uh, it's mere hours before Jesus will be arrested. After this, they're going out to the Garden of Gethsemane. They'll sp spend a little bit of time there, and then Jesus will be arrested late in the night. Less than 24 hours from when Jesus spoke this wor these words, he will breathe his last. Do you ever think about that time frame? Less than 24 hours before his death, Jesus is saying to his, to his disciples, this Passover means a lot to me. And he's gathered with his apostles, those hand-picked followers, some fishermen, a tax collector, an interesting bunch uh, with some good and bad qualities in them, guys that Jesus has worked with and traveled with for years. If we understand the text right, Judas is not there anymore. He's left by this time. So it's the 11 remaining apostles. We know that Jesus had many followers that didn't often, didn't always get mentioned in the Gospels. We know that there were many important women like Mary and Martha and all the other Marys and Marthas that we can't keep straight that were Jesus' companions and helpers and supporters and also his own family. But these men are his friends, and that's something different. And so he says, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. The, the phrase we have translated as eagerly desired is literally in the Greek, with desire I have desired. It's kind of how they emphasized it. He really, really wants this before. Remember that this is the last Passover that Jesus will celebrate. This is an act of familiarity. This is something that Jesus has done since he was a boy. This is something that he has grown up with, that he has experienced as a man. This is his ritual. This is normality. This is obedience to the law. This is recognition of God's covenantal promises in the past. And I think that's extremely important for Jesus. He is about to go into the darkest trial. And before he does that, he celebrates with his friends that God, 1,500 years ago, had brought the people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, that God had delivered them from the power of Pharaoh, had brought them over the Red Sea, had spared them and saved them and rescued them. What more fitting symbolism for Jesus to be considering and thinking about in those themes and those ideas when his own trial is about to begin. He says, I wanted to celebrate it with you. 
We know that Jesus would inevitably stand alone during his trial. From the moment the crowd arrest, comes to arrest him, Jesus is alone. His disciples will flee. Peter following at a distance, John sneaking in uh, and keeping an eye on things, but none of them are there. His beatings, the scourging, the carrying of the cross is alone. And the death on the cross is alone. Nobody is able to walk beside him on that, tri on that path. None could share his pain. Nobody can help him through that. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, Jesus knew that he would be alone. He had always known that he would be alone. And he has absolutely no desire to see his friends throw their lives away when only he needs to die. He wanted them to run away when the crowd came because he doesn't want them languishing in prison. He doesn't want them executed because God has a plan for each and every one of these men. Peter included, the one who will deny him. He will restore him and put him back to use. Every one of these 11 will be used by God to share the gospel and spread the gospel in Judea and beyond in just a few weeks and months. So Jesus knows he's going to walk alone. And so, in a sense, this is his last moment with these that he loves before the trial comes. Its value is hard for us to calculate. Jesus knows that he will need courage, he will need hope, he will need endurance, and yes, he will need love to get him through what is to come. Jesus knew he would suffer. Jesus knew that beyond anybody's experience, he would experience something that none of us can fully relate to, no matter what we've been through. And this, with his friends, will help him through it. One last thought from the last verse. He says, I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. When that next Passover comes around, one year later, Jesus knows he won't be here. He won't be here with his disciples for the next one. Because when the next one rolls around, Jesus will be seated, seated, seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. So even though he knows he will be victorious over the grave, even though he knows that three days from now he will rise in victory, this meal is the beginning of Jesus saying goodbye to his friends. This is the last time they will have this together. He knows that it's only a few weeks and they'll be gone. A couple of quick thoughts for us to think on this text as we let it go. First is that the man, Jesus Christ, in his humanity in particular, needed his friends to bolster him prior to walking to Calvary. Now that's important for us to remember. Secondly, we need the fellowship of our fellow Christians. That idea that you can get all you need as a Christian from walking in the woods and talking to God is not true. The idea that you can get all that you need fr from God by watching a good message on TV is not true. We need fellowship. And then lastly, this thought of encouragement and hope for us. Someday we will all feast together at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Jesus said we will not have this again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God, and one day it will. All those who have been brought to Christ by his blood, and by now it is billions of people. Not sure what hall they're holding it in, but it's a lot of people seated at the wedding supper of the Lamb, celebrating with Jesus the new covenant. Hi, princess. Oh, wow. <laughs>